Hey, everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of SmartHustle.com. Thanks for taking the time to join me today on the Smart Hustle podcast. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, we'd appreciate a five-star review and a comment. If you hear the sound of my voice and like what you're hearing, in fact, if you don't like what you're hearing, you can still give a five-star review too. The only thing we do at Smart Hustle is to inspire and educate small business owners to start and grow successful businesses. Why? So you can live the lives you want in providing for your families and growing your communities. That's why we're in business. I see Jason's nod. He's in concurrence. This is why we are in business. Jason, thanks for joining us today. And I should have asked you this in the green room. I'm going to take a guess of your last name. Let's see. It's a 50-50 if it's right. Hmm. I want to say Jason Richelson, but it could be one of those names where he'll say it's Roche. Is it no, Jason Richelson? You got it exactly right. Richelson. Most people get All it All right. Richelson. Love it. Jason Richelson uh, of Bookkeep. Glad you're here with us today, Jason. How are things in your world with the family and those you love? How are things happening in your side of the world? Everything is good. Very, I'm very lucky. Yeah, everything's been good. We're coming out of COVID and it seems like the world's coming back to normal. Absolutely. Is. Well, I'm glad you're here with us today, Jason. Thanks for being here. And let's dive right into it. Feel free to tell us a bit about Bookkeep, what it is, why we should care about it, what services you provide, and then maybe step back and feel free to share us, you know, briefly your journey of how you got there. We also like to get a little personal, not too personal. It's not Oprah, but just a bit to know who they, who the CEO is or founder or the executive we're talking to. So what's Bookkeep? And then feel free to touch on what brought you there and what brought you speaking to me today. Yeah, absolutely. So, so at Bookkeep, what we do is is accounting automation for retail businesses. So whether it's a small, you know, deli gift store in physical brick and mortar or a restaurant, or it's an e-commerce business that's selling on Amazon, on on Shopify, we help automate all of the sales reporting and the payment reconciliation in, in basically real time every day across all your sales channels, so that you can have accurate accounting in your books every day. Got it. And then a little bit about yourself, Jason. Are you remind me? Are you the founder of the company, or are you, are you did you work on a few startups before that? Just to help us understand who Jason I've is. I've always been a here. small business owner, so okay. I started a wine store back in Brooklyn in okay. 2004 with with a partner, and then sure. we opened more wine stores, and then a grocery store, and then I started Shopkeep, which uh, okay. you and I talked about Shopkeep maybe yes. 10 years ago. Shopkeep wasn't the first iPad point. Of yes, sale. yes. And I was so frustrated with all you know getting ripped off by these guys installing these expensive micros machines, and 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 so we put it on an iPad, and it really took off. This was even before Square. Mm -hmm. um, and Shopkeep actually recently sold to a, another company last year. Uh, good for them, ago. and good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and and as part of my experience with Shopkeep, growing Shopkeep, and working with so many small business owners in retail. And in my own experience, it's so hard to find a bookkeeper who gets your books done correctly and on time. And, and it's not necessarily their fault. They're so overworked with so much manual data. Every system that you use to make sales or take payments, they need a login for. They need to log in, download reports, collate all the reports in a spreadsheet usually in order to enter them into QuickBooks so that you can get your PL done by the end of the month. And so what I've learned over the last couple of uh, years now with building Bookkeep is that they, they just can't keep up. Like we're, we're trying to help bookkeepers and accountants here by automating what's becoming a much more complex process because everyone knows it's so easy to find a new sales method. How easy is it now to put Afterpay you know, into, your, into your process and have buy now, pay later in your, in your e-commerce card? Everyone, every time you take a new payment method in your sales channels, it, it, it makes it much harder for your bookkeeper to get the job done because now they have to book the fees, they have to figure out and make sure all the payments got deposited and, and the complexity is increasing with, because of COVID because everyone's going online. Even restaurants, restaurants are now e-commerce. I mean, it's like 30%, 30 to 50% of restaurant sales are actually online now. So accountants have to deal with many download or many uh, not uh, deposits, mm -hmm. uh, and and then they have to match those to your sales system to make sure you're getting paid for the orders. You know, make sure that you you know that DoorDash or Uber Eats didn't miss a, a deposit um, for the sales that you sent you know sent the order out for. So we're helping automate that and helping small account accounting firms and big accounting firms uh, keep track of all these numbers. I love that. So just at the stage, because I, now I understand well, I was talking to the team offline, you know, your team, and I'm thinking, okay, the typical coaches, consultants, speakers, and things like that, that I'm, maybe you can't help with them. We can talk about that in a minute, but we're not necessarily right. what I'm hearing. I could be wrong. I'm wrong. 
87% of the time, but we're not talking about them per se, but ideally high volume, you mentioned e-commerce, that's where things get very complicated. Not once a day, I need you to look at two checks. We're talking about, as you mentioned, I'm just repeating it, e-commerce, re uh, uh, restaurants, people who have 75 transactions or 10,000, that's where things get very difficult. Am I right? I just wanted to underline that for the audience. Yeah. It is where, yes, it is where things get more difficult, but I have to say, I mean, even if you're selling on PayPal and doing two orders a day, it, those orders, you know, that's still 60 a month and, and yep. the PayPal app is not that great for integrating with QuickBooks. So we, we do it in a much simpler, more transparent way of passing that data through so that you can see your P&L on a daily basis. Um, we don't do a transaction based. We do it in summary on the days of sales. So, so, so it's mostly for larger businesses, but with us, if you connect uh, Bookkeep to your Square, you know, or connect Square to Bookkeep, I should say, um, and and QuickBooks or Zero, you know, we we will have your books up to date every single night with what your sales are accurately, um, and and that's something that a lot of businesses want to know, um, as well as their costs, of course, but um, but they want to have their sales in their books properly. I love it. And remind me then, um, uh, Jason, so those who don't have bookkeep, and I think you've mentioned already, sometimes I ask questions twice um, <laughs> as I get the picture. So those who don't have bookkeep, what's happening? Paint that metaphorical picture. Jenny, she's selling tons of shoes on whatever platform she is rocking at her basement yeah. and the FedEx truck is leaving 10 times a day. What's her problem, Jason? What is her problem? <laughs> well, so so there's a con it seems to be recently that I've been realizing a lot of businesses think that you just give your accountant, you know, some papers, a login at the end of the year. Okay. You can't do it that way. You you need to know your PL every single month. Ideally, you want to know it every week and every day. I want to get you to the point where you know your PL on a daily basis so you can make adjustments to your business in real time. So and so the concept of, hey, my accountant will deal with it at the end of the year, you should be working with your accountant on a daily basis, especially if you're in e-commerce, especially if you're doing, you know, 10 orders a day, at least, you know, if not more, at, at the very least, every month, your books should be done. You should be expecting your bookkeeper or accountant to close your books every month, give you a reconciled statements that are accurate. So you know how your business is doing. And that's what's becoming very difficult for them because every person who's listening to this who has a small business knows bookkeepers always ask me for the login. I changed my password and now they can't get in. So they can't close my books. You know, why is the bookkeeper always asking me for these things? Like it's, it's like, and, and it's so frustrating. And by the way, as a bookkeeper, and we actually have a, a three bookkeepers in house. We, we actually have a small bookkeeping firm. That's how we learn these problems. It's so frustrating where they're like, I want to close their books. He won't give me the login to square. You know, well, it wouldn't be square because we have an integration, but like sure, something we don't with Uber Eats. I don't have the Uber Eats login, you know, so I can't get the data. So your bookkeepers are so frustrated with this that, that you know, we're really trying to help them with that. And the small business, what, what the small business sees is that um, in the end, their books don't get done in time. And actually something I noticed, you know, if these are a lot of small business owners on, on this, on this uh, um, call, yeah. it's, it's really, you have to remember your bookkeeper is really struggling to get the stuff done and, and you shouldn't treat them like, hey, this is your job, just go figure it out. Like they can't get to the data without your help. And it's really kind of, you know, you have to work closely with your accountant bookkeeper to make sure you get your books done. Um, and, but we're trying to make that easier just with storing logins or, or actually the way we connect to Square and to these other systems, you don't need to share logins and it just makes it easier and the data just flows through automatically. So, so what we're doing is, is really helping these businesses get their books done faster, which gives them better information, know how they're doing quickly. And this becomes really important when, with, when COVID hit, we, we got a lot of customers because they wanted to get loans and they needed their books done. And if you keep your books done on a monthly basis, then you're not going to have that problem. You're not going to get slammed and accounts cannot keep up. You're, you're not going to find an accountant who's going to you know, be able to take over your books and clean them up quickly to get a loan done. They're, they're usually already slammed with so many other clients. Um, and there's just, there's not, you know, there's not in the accounting world, not a lot of people are going into accounting. It's a very difficult space. There's a lot of hours and, and, and they're somewhat unloved, um, you know, just because people just are like, my accountant will just do it. I'll, they'll just figure it out. I'm just going to send them all these documents and they'll just figure it out. Well, it's a lot of work for them. And, um, and so not a lot of people are wanting to go into accounting because of it. So it's harder to find a good accountant slash bookkeeper um, in this world. Um, and we're just trying to empower the accountants bookkeepers so they can have better tools to, to get the job done. 
I love it. I love it. And so, so I understand it. You're not eliminating, as I understand it, but correct me if I'm wrong, eliminating or competing with the accountant per se, maybe you are, but it seems like for that process, you're saying you don't have to worry about all these 75,000, 10 transactions, whatever over here. We already have them in your uh, accounting software of choice. Most people use QuickBooks. Maybe you have others. I'm not sure. That's what the, that's what the, uh, the, the challenge you're, you're solving for the problem. Is, am I correct? Exactly. And, and most accountants are small businesses themselves. So right. we're really trying to empower them to have better automation, to get better data so that they can either have more clients, they can get done earlier in the day, you know, whatever it is that, that they're trying to achieve so that they don't have to spend hours, you know, downloading reports, doing spreadsheets, typing data in. We're really trying to empower them so that they can, you know, have a better business, build a better business or, or get done earlier in the day, whatever it is that they want to get done. I love it. Let's touch on, if you don't mind, let's switch gears a little bit. We're not going to take too much of a left turn. Uh, it's a political question. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Jason's like, take Ramon, throw it at me. No problem. <laughs> Talk to us about small business growth. That's the political question. That's um, not a political question. Just help us understand, you know, you've started or been involved in several companies and things you've been doing. T Talk to retailers, those especially who may have high volume is relative, but not to the smaller, small businesses, those who are building e-commerce businesses. I just want to understand, you know, you metaphorically and your team are talking to thousands, dozens, whatever of them a day, you're seeing transactions, you're seeing those who had to close maybe because they did this or that wrong, those who've succeeded. Can you help me understand, just talk to those e-commerce people, Ramon, here's three, four, five, a few things that really you got to do to succeed if you're an e-commerce business. And then the other question I'll ask you separately maybe is about restaurants who are new to selling online. Let's talk about them in a minute. But e-commerce businesses, Jason, what do you have for us? Talk to us about what we can learn from you and, well, and the companies you have. Well, e-commerce is definitely growing. Every, everyone knows it. Every, and, and you really, if you have a great product or you want to sell other people's products, you can set up a business in your house um, without even touching the product using mm -hmm. either Amazon seller Shopify or many other platforms. So, it, you know, it is a great way to be able to work from home. And, and if you can find a product that you want to sell or other people's products, it can be really fun to do if you, uh, if you want to get into business. Um, and, and that's just going to continue to grow. I think, you know, e-commerce is going to be, I saw a number 25% of all retail sales in the next couple of years. So that's a pretty huge number. It, it's, it's, it's growing really fast because of COVID. So, it, it is a great place to, to, to start a business. Um, when, when you do start a business, you definitely want to get a bookkeeper and an account, you know, an accountant uh, to do your taxes as well as uh, um, set up the business properly. You want mm. to you have a proper business set up and, um, and a bank account for that business. You know, as, a, as a, you know, accounting bookkeeping firm, you want to have a business bank account and separate it from your personal stuff. Um, I'm, I'm sure people have talked about that on, on here before, but it's really important to separate your business stuff from your personal stuff so that not only for your bookkeeper, because your bookkeeper can't be asking you, is that personal? Is that for the business all the time? You know, if it's in the business bank account, we know it's for the business. Um, but also for you, it just makes it easier um, as you grow to, to handle that. And it's not hard to set up a second bank account. Um, and, you know, get QuickBooks or Zero is also very good uh, for accounting and connect it to your um, bank account and start tracking every penny you spend. Um, a lot of people don't think about that or they think, hey, you know, my account will just handle this at the end of the year. It's really something that's important for a small business. I've always been deep in the accounting. I actually like the accounting. I started small businesses like wine stores and grocery stores, not because I wanted to sell wine or, or groceries. It's because I wanted to calculate and keep track of all the numbers and put the Wait system. a minute, Jason. You just said you love accounting. Did, you just, did I hear that? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a I, problem. I, don't know. I think we have to end the interview right now. I mean, that's just, that's just, I love well, accountants. But the numbers, no, nah, not my jam. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> well, it's, it's accountants are very interesting people. They love it when all the, you know, when all the, just like yes. you, when numbers match. Your That's sales, right. your payment said this, they match. Everything is great. I can, rec I'm reconciled. I'm, the books are closed and here's my PL. I so, love it. But it's important. Don't, don't, you know, you really need to know your own numbers though. That's, yeah. I always tell that to people. Even if it seems hard to understand, you know, find, find an accountant, a CPA, you can go, you can find a QuickBooks Pro Advisor at QuickBooks's website. Um, look for a Pro Advisor locally. They'll be able to advise you. Those are those are our customers that use our software. Um, they'll be able to advise you um, as you grow and, and teach you, you know, some of the accounting stuff. It takes time to learn, but but you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's there's only a few concepts you need to understand, and um, and it's important to separate your business from your personal stuff. So that, that's one of the, the main ones to get started. 
Is it fair to say, Jason, these are my words, not yours, but something I'm hearing and what you didn't say, is it fair to say those who don't have this and some of these things, knowing their numbers, possibly those are some reasons why their e-commerce business failed. I think the first thing you did hint at, or you said, have a good product. I think that's one thing yeah. that's a little helpful, right? But beyond having a good product, is it fair to say not knowing your numbers can harm your business? And if so, why is that? Unpack that a bit more. What are some dangers? I'm selling, Jason. I got. I thought I had $2 million in gross sales or whatever it is. I'm, I'm making money. It, something's happening good. How is that still a danger not to know some key numbers? Unpack that a bit. Exactly. It, it, you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. You need, if you use Shopify, just as an example, sure. and Shopify is really great financial reporting in their, in their product, it's only half the picture. Mm. You don't, you, you know what Shopify is telling you in your sales, and it'll actually tell you your cost of goods sold if you're bringing your inventory through Shopify. But the rest of your expenses are not in Shopify. All of the Shopify data has to get into QuickBooks, which is what we do automatically. Mm -hmm. And then that has to be mashed up with whatever your other expenses are, um, in, including, you know, purchasing product if you're building product or you're, you're purchasing it, as well as your fixed costs. All of that has to get into QuickBooks. And then the books need to get reconciled to your bank account so that you can really know how you're doing that. That gets done on a monthly basis. So, so it seems easy to set up a Shopify store and I can see my sales, but it's really easy not to realize all the costs that might be going into to the shop unless you're doing it, you know, in QuickBooks in your accounting platform or zero. There's plenty of other accounting platforms. Sure. Um, and, and that's really important to get early, early on is know how you're doing from, from the first month. Sure. And is that advice, I'm, I'm guessing much of that advice applies to a restaurant tour, but I've talked to a number of restaurant owners who are relatively new to e-commerce. They know all about hiring waitresses and servers or, or waiters and servers and dishwashers and, you know, real estate business, I'm guessing, you correct me, but I think a, real, a, re, a restaurant is largely a real estate business and all those things and laws. But now we're selling online, some maybe not for the first time, but they're doing it more, if you get what I mean. It's been relatively new. The QR codes on the, all these things we're getting into. And a lot of times I must give credit that I've noticed there's a lot of third-party vendors who help make some of this a little easier. Even I was in a store and I think Yelp had a little uh, kiosk where you could check in, put your cell number to get in line. I was like, oh, that's cool. So anyways, sometimes Jason, I ask 5,000 questions in one breath, but you can follow me. <laughs> but um, help me understand, what are your tips for retail, for restaurant owners who are getting more to e-commerce? Any different advice for them that you've noticed? Or I, have, I have... Yeah, a lot of advice. For, restaurant is a very difficult business. You definitely want to be working closely with your uh, bookkeeper account and make sure everything's getting in. And every single one of those delivery apps that you use, you really need to get very clear on the month monthly reporting, uh, which really ends up hitting your QuickBooks because they take a lot of fees. Uh, Uber Eats, Grubhub, there are a lot of different fees that get added. We see it because we see the numbers coming through our platform. And there's a bunch of fees that you may or may not realize is ha are happening, and you need to be on top of those. Um, especially DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, you know, all, all of them. Um, so you really want to pay attention to that. Now, all those platforms can really help you get business because they market, they show mm -hmm. up, you know, show up in the apps. So they're really they're all great platforms, but you really want to know: are you actually making money on these orders? Mm -hmm. You want to separate those sales in your accounting platform from the sales in your store, which are going to have a different margin. Um, and, and really understand those costs, uh, the fees associated with that. So, so you really have to pay attention to it. But, but a lot of those apps are really great uh, to use and, um, and can really help your business. So uh, the, you know, I'm not saying don't use them, but I really understand the costs associated, yeah. Yeah. And one thing I'm hearing you say, again, as you say, we're not saying don't use them, but just understand it is like even in, in small business in general, oh, we sold, you know, $50 million of these, whatever it is, and not realizing thanks to your accountant, because again, I'm not a numbers guy, I'm your average, but your average Joe small business owner, that's how I like to portray myself, is that your accountant may tell you, wait a minute, you've lost two cents, if, if you follow what I'm saying, Jason, or a dollar on yeah. each one of these shoes you sold. So good for you yeah. sold the shoes, but you're losing money. Is that's, that's kind of what I'm hearing you say, raise your price, sell another product upsell, but you got to figure out the numbers with that. Is that a fair, is, am I tracking what you're saying? It's exactly right. And you have to know that. I mean, if you can note every week, that'd be great, but it, at least every month, you need to know those. You should be, your accountant bookkeeper should be closing the books at the end of the month. Once they get the statements, you know, the, it should, it should get closed within a couple of days after that so that you know how your business did every month. You know, you know, there's all kinds of surprises in business. Every business, small business owner knows you're talking to so many people. There's everything's coming at you. I got to send this check from you know, for payroll. And, and this guy didn't, you know, his payroll was wrong. All these things that you have to deal with. 
that you just can't keep track of like what's really all flowing through your bank account necessarily, especially if you're a restaurant, which is extremely hectic. Um, and, and so you really want to get those books every month and sit down and look at them and understand them and talk to your, and set up a call with your accountant so that you can see them. I love it, from the accountant. No, I love it, Jason. Anything I didn't ask you, Jason, and we talked quite a bit, but anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to mention, feel free. I have, I got all day, but anything you wanted to right. mention, I didn't ask you. Um, no, I, I mean, I think we covered all of it. I think, it, I think, but you brought up the, the best point. A, a lot of small businesses don't consider how important accounting is. And, and I, and you say you're not a numbers guy, but it, it the numbers aren't that hard it, to sure, really understand. You want them, the hard thing to understand is that if they're not in the books, if you don't have your books reconciled and closed every month, like that's the point when you can start looking at them. Your QuickBooks mm. is never exactly accurate until it's closed, which means the bank is reconciled. Every transaction has been, you know, checked off. There's no duplicates. You know, there's not two checks in QuickBooks, even though I only mm. sent one. All that stuff has to be cleaned up at the end of the month because when you look at it in between, it, it, it's not going to give you a good picture. But once it's closed, that's when you can study it. And, and it's not that complicated. You know, you know, profit is, you know, costs, your costs go in and your gross sales are gross sales, but you got to look at your discounts. And by the way, returns are a big part that you don't think about. Um, mm -hmm. And those books too. So, um, and everything ties out to the deposits that hit your bank account. And that's what our software handles for you is making sure everything gets tied together, the gross sales to the deposits. That's what Bookkeep does automatically for these accountants. And, and because we do run into instances with e-commerce platforms where they think they sold or Shopify says you had this income, but you didn't get paid for it. There's a whole bunch of prop ways that that could happen on Shopify if you don't close out the order properly. And we've seen it where uh, the owner thinks that they got paid and the account's like, well, you didn't get paid because Shopify says it, but you didn't get the deposits because you didn't close them out properly. And those things don't, you don't learn about them unless you close your books every month. And in this particular example, this was someone who was trying to clean up last year and it was already too late. It happened in June. You lost that five grand. Um, so so it, is, it is super important. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. You can find a QuickBooks Pro Advisor online. They understand all this stuff and they'll teach you. And it's very important to grow your business that you understand accounting. It, it, you don't have to understand all of it, but just understand what are sales, what are assets, you know, what are liabilities. You know, By the way, the money that you bring in part of bringing it into your books, you might see all this cash coming into your bank account and I'm still the same. See, this is a really important point. Okay. I still look at my bank account to see how I'm doing. It's just from my first wine store, there's cash in the bank account. That cash is not all yours. A lot of That's it right. is sales tax. A lot of it, you know, and, and fees are taken out before it even hits the bank now, but a lot of it could be sales tax. A lot of it could be tips if you're a restaurant. And unless you're se separating that out, like our software automatically does for you into your books, and you look at what your income is, not what's the cash in the bank account, you're, you can be confused at what's going on. Um, and so, you know, and you might get a false sense of how, how well you're doing because how much cash is in your checking account. And we, I see it all the time, sadly, getting in trouble with the sales tax authorities for not filing your tax on time because you maybe didn't have the cash, be, uh, because you didn't realize you had to pay it. Um, and that can get you in a lot of trouble. That is what can close a business, not paying your sales tax properly. And, and so that's why you want to get your books done every month, know what your sales tax due is, ideally move it to a separate checking account uh, so that you don't have to deal, you know, you don't have to think it's yours. You know, you can set up a separate account or, and even Square now allows you to have a savings account inside Square. So you can set aside 8% if you're using Square and Square will hold on to that in their savings account. So you won't necessarily think it's yours because that savings account could be called sales tax basically. Right. And there's other tools. Uh, a great one I like is called Davo, D-A-V-O from Avalara. Davo, if you're, if you're selling on Square and, and Clover and some other systems, they will actually look, you know, they'll get connected to those systems. They'll actually take the sales tax out of your checking account the next day mm -hmm. and pay it for you and file it for you. I highly recommend that because getting in trouble with sales tax is a big problem. And, and it happens too often. And uh, so using those tools can really help make sure that you, you know, you don't forget or, oh, it's the 20th, I forgot to pay and I'm going to get a 10% fine. That can be a big fine uh, for a lot of businesses. So, so it, accounting is important because, you know, if you don't do the accounting right, you can get in trouble. Your business can get in trouble, no matter how much you're selling. Uh, it is, it is an important thing to, to understand. And even if you learn it over a year, over a couple of years, you know, you don't have to learn it all right up front, but it is important to help make sure you can continue to grow your business. 
No, listen, that is powerful. That is important. I think I could talk to you for the next four hours. We'll have to do it in person on the stage again, Jason, you and I. Uh -huh. Jason, one more time, give us your full name, uh, title, the name of your company. Even though I've said it, love to hear it from you. Uh, full name, name of the company, and your title. Thanks. Okay. My name is Jason Richardson. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Bookkeep. Awesome. Hey, and this is Ramon Ray, founder of smarthustle.com, where we inspire and motivate small business owners to start and grow successful businesses so that you can live the life you want, building your business, providing for your family, and ultimately supporting your community. That's what we want you to do. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, and you like what you heard, give us a five-star review. If you don't like what you heard, that's okay. Still give us a five-star review. Thanks for hanging out with me and Jason. Again, you can find information like this all day long at smarthustle.com.